Okay, guys, um, welcome to uh, session number two. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the first session um, and, have, and worked through that okay. Uh, session number two, now this is called, we're gonna go straight in, it's um, called binomial expansion. Uh, what it really is, is expanding lots of brackets, which we'll see in a minute. Um, okay, so I'm gonna disappear now. And remember, do the work um, that I set at the end and do upload to the OneNote page um, and any issues, uh, let me know. Okay, session two, um, binomial expansion. As I said, this really is uh, expanding uh, brackets, essentially. So we're gonna do a bit of practice on how we know already. So expand and simplify. Uh, x plus 2 squared, okay? So you might want to pause the video uh, and have a go at that. Um, if you were to expand it, you would split it up like that. And I'll just give you the answer. It was x squared. You should end up with plus 4x plus 4, okay? Now, let's move on slightly. What would you do to x plus 3 cubed, okay? Now again, pause the video, you might want to have a go at that one. But again, for this one, you would probably separate it into three brackets and you'd expand a triple bracket there. And I'll tell you what the answer for this one is. Hopefully I haven't made a mistake here, but it should have been. Okay. Now, let's go even further. So, x plus 2 to the power of four. Now you might want to pause this, but to be honest, I'm not going to do this just yet because there's a quicker way we can develop these. And you might start to see there is a pattern developing here. Um, and by the end of the session, hopefully you could do x plus two to the power of six or to the power of seven even, or even higher, okay? So that's what we're looking at today when you expand brackets to lots of big powers. And there are some uses of this. It comes up a lot in probability. It also could does come up when you want to expand brackets. Uh, it is an extremely useful skill to be able to do. So in general, if you've got a plus b to the power of zero, okay, anything to the power of zero is just one, isn't it? So I'm just going to put one there. Now, if I did a plus b to the power of one, well, that's just itself, isn't it? It's, or it's 1a plus 1b, a plus b. Okay. Right, let's look at a plus b squared. Now, a plus b times a plus b, you can have a go at this one, or you can trust me that it's going to be 1a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Okay, that's what it will be, 1b squared. We would never put 1b squared, wouldn't you? Wouldn't we? But we just put b squared. But I've put 1 there just so you can hopefully see a pattern in a minute. a plus b cubed. Well, that's a cubed. Again, you can have a go at this if you don't believe me. But it's going to be 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus 1b cubed. Okay. And let's do the final one. a plus b to the 4. Well, I could keep going forever. Again, pause the video. You might have spotted a pattern here. Uh, what do you think this one would be? It's going to be 1a to the 4 plus 4a cubed b plus 6a squared b squared plus 4a b plus 1b power of 4. And this goes on, this pattern goes on uh, forever, really. Um, this is extremely useful. So this is something definitely write in your notes. That's an extremely. And this on the right side, this, this, uh, this thing here, uh, this has got a famous name. Some of you may have come across. This is called Pascal's Triangle. Pascal, famous mathematician. Pascal's Triangle. Now, Pascal's Triangle is created by, you start with one, and then you put one, one, and then it's the sum of anything in the middle. So this is one plus one. 2, 1 on there, then it's going to be 1, because then it's 2 plus 1, 3, 1, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Just take a bit of time to see how, how you would uh, how you'd get that line. That is really, really helpful, because it links to these numbers, doesn't it? 
And these numbers here are called the coefficients. If you've got a number before an algebraic term, these are called the coefficients. Okay? And it's going to be really, really helpful when we look at an example in a second. Okay? Right, so how do we actually use this in practice? So EG1, uh, expand um, 2 plus 5x to the power of 4. Okay, so expand up all the way up to the power of 4. Now I could do this longhand, but it would take me a while, so I can do it quicker. Now I know if I use this, what we've generated for Pascal's triangle, A is equal to 2, the first number, and B is equal to 5x, okay? And it's uh, to the power of 4, so it's going to be this row, okay, this row. And I just follow the steps. I can generate that row um, using the pattern. But I'm going to go zoom straight into that row, and the first term is 1, A to the power of 4. Now A is 2, isn't it? So it's 2 to the power of 4. The next term is 4, a cubed, 2 cubed, times b, it's 5x. The next term is 6, a squared, b squared. The next term is 4, a, b cubed. And the final term is b to the power of 4. Okay, now at this stage I can simplify it a bit. 2 to the power of 4, 2 times 2 is 4, that's going to be 4 to 16, plus 2 cubed is 8, 8 times 20 is 160x. The next one, I might have to start getting my calculator out. Uh, so the next one is uh, 6 times 2 squared times, remember to time, do the 5 squared as well, 600x squared. The next one, 4 times 2 times 5 cubed, 1000x cubed. And the last one's just 5 to the power of 4. 625, 625x to the power of 4. That would be my expansion. Okay? A lot easier than expanding it with brackets. I hope you'd agree with that. Right, let's look at another one then. EG2. So, um, expand. Um, let's go 3 minus 2x to the power of 5. Um, Sorry, I'm going to just rewrite this slightly. Find the first three terms in ascending powers of x in. Okay, sorry, that's, that's three minus. Okay, so find the first three terms in ascending powers of x. Okay, so that means that we're not expanding the whole lot. We're just going up to, well, we're going to use the constant, then the x, then the x squared, which I'll explain in a minute. Now, okay, again, I go in, my a is going to be 3, and my b is minus 2x, okay? Right, I'm also going to the power of 5, so I might even, I'm going to have to even go to one more row on this. I'm going to put a plus b to the power of 5 is equal to the, well, the first term is a to the 5. Second term is going to be 1 plus 4. It's going to be 5. a to the 4, b. And the next term on Pascal's triangle is 4 plus 6. So it's going to be 10, a to the 3, b squared. I'm not going to go further than this because I don't need to, because it said I only need to do the first three terms in ascending powers of x. So if I substitute my values in now, I've got 3 to the power of 5 plus 5, 3 to the 4 times b, which is negative 2x. Don't forget the negatives. A lot of people here make mistakes because of the negatives. Then you've got 10, 3 to the power of 3 minus 2x squared again don't need to go any further because it's only asked for the first three terms 
So, if I get my calculator up now, first one is 3 to the power of 5. 2, 4, 3. Second one is going to be 8, 10. Change that. And the third one I just be careful with that negative two has got to be in brackets one oh eight oh And that's where I stop because it's in ascending powers of x. The first one doesn't have an x at all, so it's x to the power of zero. The next one's just x to the power of one, and the next one's x squared. So read the question carefully. Sometimes it will be ascending, usually it will be ascending, uh, sometimes it might be descending, and you've got to work out which terms you use. Okay, final question. Now, sometimes the, the point of this is sometimes we're not interested in the whole expansion. We're only interested in the first few terms. Um, you'll see at A level why the bigger those terms get, sometimes they just become irrelevant. Okay, so there is a point to just uh, doing the first three. Right, final one, e.g. 3. Find the coefficient of the x squared term in the expansion two x plus three power four. So find the coefficient of the x squared term. So I'm only interested in the term that's going to have an x squared in it. Okay. Right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to again I'm looking at the fourth row. I'm looking at the fourth row because it's power of four. Sorry, not the fourth row. It's this row, which is actually the fifth row. One, two. Three. I find the fifth row in my Pascal's triangle. One, two, three, five. So I know it's going to be one. Sometimes I, have to, I sometimes create it. One, one. And it's this row here. So we one more row than the actual power. So I know straight away it's going to be that row there. And I know that A is equal to 2x and B is equal to 3. I could have done that the other way around because 2x plus 3 is the same as 3 plus x. Okay, now my first term, I could expand the whole lot, but my first term is going to be A to the power of 4. That's no good. I don't need, I'm not interested in that because it's a power of 4. Next one's going to be 4, A to the power of 3, B. Okay, again, no good to me because that's not going to give me an x squared. The next term, 6a squared, b squared. Okay, you'll see there's a pattern. It always goes a to the 4, then a to the 3b, then a to the squared squared. And these two numbers here always add up to the power. In this case, the power is 4. It comes from there. Okay. So those two numbers always up to four. Can you see here? Three and one, those are going to add up to four. And here's just four on its own. That adds up to four the first term. Okay. Now I'm only interested in this term because I'm only interested in the x squared term. If I zoom in on that particular term, I'm going to get six times, remember, times two squared. And then times three squared. 216. So the answer is 216x squared. Now the coefficient is just the number before the x squared. So the answer to this question is 216. Again, this does have some very useful uses later on in maths, but for now we just need to be confident doing this. Okay. Right, I know this is a new bit of maths, so hopefully you're finding this a bit exciting. Um, I want you to see some questions now on this. So it's from the exercise book again. Exercise 1F, please. Question 1, VI, so the last part. Question 2, VI. Question 3, question 5, and then questions 9, 10, 11. Okay, that's the work for this session. 
We're carrying on with the binomial expansion next session, slightly harder examples. Um, but for now, uh, that's what you need to try and get through. Um, okay, guys, well done for listening. I am on the email. If you do have any questions, um, do feel free to, to get in touch. Okay, well done, guys.